Have you ever wondered how bridges are built? These remarkable structures aren't just the result of a simple one, two, three process. They require a symphony of careful planning, precise execution, and the collective expertise of a multitude of professionals. Civil engineers, architects, construction workers, and many others work in harmony to transform a mere concept into a physical reality that withstands the test of time and elements. Bridge construction is a complex ballet of science, engineering, and art, where every step, from the foundation to the reinforcement, and finally the superstructure, is crucial. The process is meticulous, demanding, and nothing short of fascinating. It's a journey that takes us from the drawing board to the final structure that spans across rivers, valleys, and roads, connecting people and places. So are you ready to unravel the secrets behind these engineering marvels? Join us as we delve into the fascinating world of bridge construction. Every great bridge starts with a brilliant idea. Now that's not just a poetic statement, it's a practical one. Conceptualization is the cornerstone of any successful construction project, and bridges are no exception. This phase is when you take your brilliant idea and shape it into a tangible plan. It's where the magic happens, so to speak. But it's not all about creativity. There's a lot of technical work involved too. Accurate measurements are critical. One tiny miscalculation can lead to disastrous consequences down the line. Feasibility studies are another key part of the process. You need to understand the land, the weather, the resources at your disposal, and let's not forget design considerations. The bridge needs to be functional, of course, but it also needs to be aesthetically pleasing and environmentally friendly. All these elements come together in the conceptualization phase. With a solid plan in hand, it's time to move on to the next phase. The foundation of a bridge is its backbone. And just like a backbone, the foundation must be strong, reliable, and able to bear weight. In order to achieve this, we must first prepare the foundation. The foundation preparation process starts with site excavation. This is the process of removing soil, rock, and other materials from the site. The aim is to reach a level that's stable enough to support the weight of the bridge. It's a crucial step that requires meticulous planning and execution. Once the site is excavated, the next step is to install piles. Piles are long, sturdy columns, usually made of steel or concrete. They are driven deep into the ground to provide additional support to the bridge. They work by transferring the bridge's load to the layers of soil or rock that have the capacity to bear it. This process, known as pile driving, is often accompanied by a rhythmic, pounding sound that echoes across the construction site. But before we drive piles into the ground, we need to understand the soil we're working with. That's where soil testing comes in. Soil testing is an essential part of foundation preparation. It helps us understand the properties of the soil, such as its composition, moisture content, and load-bearing capacity. Different types of soil have different characteristics. Some soils are strong and stable, while others are weak and prone to shifting. By testing the soil, we can determine the best type of foundation for the bridge. If the soil is weak, for instance, we may need to use a deep foundation system that relies heavily on piles, the process of preparing the foundation is a delicate balance of science, engineering, and brute force. It requires careful planning, precise execution, and a deep understanding of the ground beneath our feet. The importance of a strong foundation cannot be overstated. It's what allows a bridge to stand tall and sturdy, to bear the weight of countless vehicles day in and day out. It's what ensures the safety and longevity of the structure. A strong foundation ensures the bridge can bear the load it was designed for. And that's why we invest so much time and effort into preparing the foundation. It's not just about building a bridge, it's about building a bridge that will stand the test of time. With the foundation in place, it's time for the substructure. This phase of our bridge construction project puts a spotlight on the elements that bolster the bridge from beneath, acting as a reliable support system for the superstructure. Let's start with the piers. These vertical structures rise above the level of the ground or water, acting as the main load-bearing elements of the bridge. 
They are typically built of concrete or stone, with their design and placement, factoring in the load they'll need to carry, the soil or water conditions, and the materials available. Next in line are the abutments. These crucial elements connect the bridge to the land on either side, bearing the load of the bridge and transferring it to the ground. They are essentially robust supports that prevent the ends of the bridge from moving, providing a solid connection between the bridge and the earth. Other elements of the substructure include the bearings and expansion joints. Bearings are used to transmit the load from the superstructure to the substructure and allow for necessary movements due to temperature changes, wind, or seismic activity. Expansion joints, on the other hand, allow the bridge to expand and contract with temperature fluctuations, preventing damage from these natural shifts. While these elements may seem simple in theory, their construction involves meticulous planning and precision. The stability of the entire bridge depends on the strength of these elements. They are designed to withstand not just the weight of the bridge and its traffic, but also the forces of nature, from winds and earthquakes to the relentless flow of water beneath. In essence, the substructure forms the backbone of our bridge. It's a testament to the strength that lies beneath the surface, a strength that's often unseen but always felt. Without a sturdy substructure, our bridge would be like a house built on sand, unable to stand the test of time and the forces of nature. And so as we build the substructure, we're not just laying down concrete and steel, we're shaping the very essence of the bridge, ensuring its stability, strength, and longevity. The substructure is the bridge's support system, providing a base for the superstructure to rest upon. Now comes the part you see when you drive across, the superstructure. The superstructure is like the star of the show in bridge construction, as it's the part that's visible above the foundation. This section includes the deck, beams, trusses, and many other elements that work together to distribute the load to the substructure. The deck is the surface of the bridge that people and vehicles travel on. It's usually made of concrete or steel, sometimes even both. The deck needs to be strong and durable, as it faces the most direct impact from traffic and weather conditions. Then, there are the beams. These are long, horizontal structures that stretch from one end of the bridge to the other. They are usually made of steel or concrete, and their primary function is to support the deck. Beams are designed to withstand the forces of bending and shear that result from the weight of the deck and the loads it carries. Trusses are another key element of the superstructure. They are triangular structures that add rigidity and stability to the bridge. Trusses are typically made of steel and are used to distribute the load evenly across the entire structure. They ensure that no single part of the bridge is under too much stress. Other elements, such as arches and cables, may also be part of the superstructure, depending on the type of bridge being constructed. Arches, for instance, are used in arch bridges to distribute the load to the supports at each end. Cables, on the other hand, are used in suspension bridges to hold up the deck. All these components work in harmony to distribute the load from the superstructure to the substructure. This distribution is crucial for the stability and longevity of the bridge. It ensures that the bridge can bear the weight of cars, trucks, trains, or even pedestrians without any risk of collapse. The superstructure is the part of the bridge that carries the load, whether it's a car, a truck, or a train. So next time you cross a bridge, spare a thought for the engineering marvel that's holding you up. With the superstructure complete, it's time for the finishing touches. This phase of the project is all about adding the final aesthetic and safety features that make our bridge not only functional, but also visually appealing and safe for all users. Let's start with safety features. These include guardrails, lighting, and signage. Guardrails are critical to prevent vehicles and pedestrians from accidentally falling off the bridge. They need to be strong and sturdy, able to withstand substantial impact. Next, we have lighting. Adequate lighting ensures visibility during nighttime or adverse weather conditions, enhancing safety for all bridge users. And then, we have signage. Clear and visible signs guide users regarding speed limits, lane usage, and other bridge rules. Now let's talk about painting and other finishing works. The choice of paint isn't just about aesthetics, it's also about protection. 
A high-quality, weather-resistant paint can protect the bridge's structure from elements like rain, snow, and sunlight. The paint color should blend with the surroundings, complementing the local landscape rather than clashing with it. Other finishing works may include landscaping around the bridge and installing architectural features that enhance the overall design. But before we can declare the bridge ready for use, there's one crucial step left, rigorous testing. This is when we validate the safety and durability of our bridge. We conduct a series of tests to measure the bridge's load capacity, stability, and resilience against environmental factors. We use various methods, from load testing with heavy vehicles, to vibrational testing, and even simulated weather conditions. These tests are crucial because they ensure the bridge can safely carry the expected traffic and withstand the local climate. They help identify any potential issues or weaknesses, allowing for necessary adjustments before the bridge is open to the public. Once the bridge passes all tests, it's ready to serve its purpose, connecting people and places. This is the moment of truth for any bridge construction project, when all the planning, hard work, and attention to detail finally come together to create a safe, durable, and aesthetically pleasing structure. Building a bridge is no small feat. It's a process that requires meticulous planning, careful execution, and unwavering attention to detail. We start with a solid conceptualization, a vision of what the bridge will be. This is followed by the preparation of the foundation, the backbone of the entire structure, ensuring its stability and longevity. Next, we move on to the construction of the substructure. This is the part of the bridge that supports the weight and transfers it to the foundation. It's a crucial stage that sets the stage for the next phase, superstructure construction. This is where the bridge really begins to take shape, forming the part that we see and use every day. Finally, we arrive at the finishing phase, where the bridge is tested for safety and durability, ensuring it can withstand the elements and the traffic it will encounter. So the next time you cross a bridge, you'll know the meticulous process that went into its creation.